Today's episode is a success story about an Egyptian journalist and editor-in-chief of the Egyptian newspaper Akhbar al-Adab. He was described as the owner of a unique novelistic project in which the Egyptian heritage was inspired to create a wondrous world of fiction that is today one of the most mature novelist experiences. Gamal al Ghitani. Gamal al Ghitani contributed to the revival of many forgotten Arabic texts and the rediscovery of ancient Arabic literature with a serious contemporary look. He also described al Ghitani as a great literary stature and one of the pioneers of the novels and narration in Egypt and the Arab world, and one of the most prominent Arab novelists or novelist voices in the last half century. In the beginning of my life, I was a, a, a strong socialist. And then uh, I have an idea, as all the my colleagues, we must arrive to the public, uh, to the people, <coughs> all the people. And I discovered after time, this is the big, my target, my project, I want to write something you, you can found like it in literature, history. Not only the Egyptian or Arabic, or the humanity, uh, the, the heritage humanity. And this is my illusion. Perhaps I can't, but I prefer. My, my right, I dream. I try to dream and walk, uh, and walk once. Now, I am writing for the text. I am writing in the language helped me to write which, what I want to say. To say. The problem of feeling a reader is not in my mind. Gamal al Ghitani was born in May 1945 in Juhaina, one of the centers of Suhaï Gaunerate in Upper Egypt, where he received his primary education at Abdul Rahman Khuda School and completed it at Al Gamaleya Primary School. In 1959, he finished middle school from Muhammad Ali Preparatory School, then joined the School of Arts and Crafts in Abbasiya. He worked as a child as a carpet maker, then worked in one of the Khan al Khalili factories and worked as secretary for the Egyptian Cooperative Society for the crafts and artists of Khan Khalili. A Shroud of History and Symbolism al Ghitani also worked as an inspector at the time of some small carpet factories and then a supervisor on carpet factories in Minya Governorate. He believed that this work had a significant impact on his way of thinking and his novelistic style and he seemed in his novels to reweave the facts of ancient history into creative works in new ways and in a controlled manner. In 1963, Al-Ghitani was able to work as a painter in the Egyptian General Organization for Productive Cooperation, where he continued to work with the institution until the year 1965. In 1967, he worked as secretary of the Egyptian Cooperative Society for makers, or rather crafts, and artists of Khan Khalili until 1969. He had a special vision based on reconsidering the entire global creative heritage to be a repeater and not a copyist. al Ghitani believed at the time that the height of the Egyptian rhetoric was in the Mamluk era, in contrast to the academic vision 
that sees it as an era of literary decadence. I uh, was the grow up, I opened my eyes from Old Cairo. Old Cairo is a special case, cultural case. Very deep. Any site you look, you can see minarets, decoration on the entrance of mosques, all the houses which are here. Yeah, very strong. This heavy, full history. Of course, I start to looking for all is live here. <laughs> what is the Musafir uh, Khan? Also, um, many tombs, many uh, mythology. Uh, one day, I listen uh, one uh, man, man, he speak about. Sur al Azakiya. Sur al Azakiya. It is about one and a half kilometers from the other, but of course I was small and my family afraid if I go far. Far it's near the Kusil Square. <laughs> half kilometer. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I listen about many books, very cheap, in the Sur al Azakiya. And I decided to go. <laughs> and uh, tell you uh, the second day by uh, the Galahia. My, uh, I, I start to walk the uh, mosque, then to uh, Surah Al-Zakir. I think this is one the more earnest uh, day in my life. Many books, all the books, all the books, Arabic, French, English, and uh, I know many persons in, the, in this place. And one, I remember one sheikh, he has a uh, place. He walked in, in all the time. His name is Sheikh Harbush. I told him, Sheikh Harbush, I want a Fatihat Makkiyah for Ibn Arabi. He, he answered me, yes, yes, okay. And he walked. After five years, I forget. <laughs> After five years, I meet him. Jamal, I pray for you and for Hatib Makkah, what do you want? Wow. Yeah, it, 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 this, it was very rich, uh, very rich uh, society, the, the centers of culture and the old books. And the old Cairo in this time, uh, it was society culture. Uh, when I want to meet Mahfouz, where I go? To his meeting. <laughs> every, every, uh, uh, Mahfouz, I first time uh, I saw him when I was 13. In the street. I, meet, I, I, I saw him, he came from the Akaka Square to the Opera, and uh, uh, I go to him, Mr. Mahfouz, I am the man of the town, I am a writer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, he was uh, very young, just about 1959. He was in 49. He was very big and uh, mafuz, and this time he was uh, very strong. He looked to me, oh, Mr. Gamal, Mr. Gamal, you can come to our meeting. I asked him, where? He yeah, told me in an opera, Kazim uh, uh, Opera. Kazim Opera, this is a nightclub, consists of three uh, floors. <laughs> the first one is a street, normal cafe. The second one for Mahfouz and uh, culture meeting. The third one, nightclub for dance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but in the night, of course. It was a very dancer, a very dancer uh, lady, Safiya Halim. 
<laughs> she is uh, very famous, in, but yes, I saw her. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and in this time, our family, my, my father, he from our Egypt, he considered any, any meeting in the coffee, and I go, this is uh, not good for me. I, I shall go to the coffee, and then uh, I shall not uh, look to my lessons, to my school. Also, I, I shall see safes and uh, drugs and uh, not very bad. <laughs> but I start in secret, go to meet Mahfouz in our meeting. In Cairo, in this time, very important uh, weekly meeting every week. Nadwa is I know Sheikh Amir Khor. This is my, uh, my professor. Not by university, because every week I go to his meeting to, uh, and I listen and I discuss him. Also, Abbas Mahmoud al Ahmad in Helluvis. Uh, his, his, but the problem of al Ahmad only is uh, one speak in the meeting. Al Ahmad, everybody can ask, <laughs> but no <now> discuss. <coughs> The, in Cairo, it was about 10 uh, meetings every week. If I can go to this meeting, it means I read Bible. Mm. And I listen, I, uh, I learn the experience. Uh, Holy, he is the one of, uh, I am speaking about the Fatah Rafat Tahtawi and uh, Sheikh Muhammad Abdu, they was the great uh, sheikhs. They was uh, present the Islam and the Arabic, uh, the Western uh, culture. In Khori, he was a student. He was uh, put on uh, Azhar crosses uh, and the uh, under uh, like the Western, uh, this week, yes, and uh, I discussed him. Of course, I, this time I was uh, socialist, and uh, very hot to discuss 13 and 70. Sheikh Amir al Kholi and Gamal uh, al Batar. But he listened, and he respected me, and he invited me to his house. This is my, my, my atmosphere, the, our, our atmosphere in the 50s and 60s. In 1969, al Ghitani changed his job again to become a war correspondent on the Battlefronts for Akhbar al Yom Foundation. In 1974, he moved to work in the investigative journalism department. And 11 years later, in 1985, he was promoted to the head of the literary department of Akhbar al Yom. Al Ghitani was one of the founders of the literary newspaper Exhibition 68, which quickly became the mouthpiece of his generation of writers. In 1993, Al Ghitani founded the newspaper Akhbar Al Adab, or Literature News, issued by Akhbar Al Yom. Since its first issue, it has become one of the most important cultural newspapers in Egypt and Arab world. Al-Ghitani held the position of editor-in-chief of the newspaper. I started to write in uh, 1925. Uh, in 1925... 1925? Uh, 95. 95. 95. 95. Mm -hmm. When I shall finish, I don't know. Perhaps still walking. Uh, I try to rebuild the memory. I try to rebuild the life through my memory. Uh, the first volume, uh, the love story not complete. Second volume about the prayer. And I think the prayer is very uh, near from the meaning, the deep meaning of life. The, the fourth one, about women. 
window has uh, opened to abroad and window has a meaning because the more important the window to inside to my soul. I discovered American, uh, great American dental uh, because uh, when I travel, I must go to the museum, uh, the, of course, to the bookshop. I know the bookshop of New York, and now they know me. <laughs> Strand uh, books and uh, another book, uh, uh, another, uh, and I have a uh, good library in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. I discovered Edward Hoover. And I feel he is very near from me. He tried to say what I want to say in, in my office. Because the first, he presents the humanity solitude. Humanity solitude, very deep. And uh, when I see Edward Hoover, I feel New York more. I feel New York through Edward Hoover. When I walk uh, late uh, night uh, and I see a uh, girl alone, uh, drink something, you know, wine or beer or coffee alone, exactly like Homer. I, I see his, uh, his solitude through Homer. This is the great art, the great right. I, 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 I can write about the, this glass. If you want, you can take the meaning quickly. This is a thought about the glass. But I can tell you the story of all the humanity from the same lines. Gamal Ghitali was one of the numbered or very few experts in architecture, not in the archaeological or historical sense, but in the philosophical and mystical sense. He made tours and participated in television programs and in-depth cultural readings at al Muiz Street mosques and by Mary Stans and all schools. al considered that architecture is the closest art to the novel and said that he was inspired by it all, his way of thinking. He even mentioned when receiving the French Order of Science and Letters of the Night degree he said, my interest in architecture is because the novel is a structure and my love for music is because the novel is rhythm. After Jamal Ghitani's first literary breakthrough in 1965, he continued to publish his stories in many Egyptian and Arab periodicals and that Ghitani belonged in some way to a group of progressive intellectuals and writers with leftist tendencies including uh, Ibrahim Fathi, Ahmed Al-Khamisi, Sayyid Khamis, Salah Isa, Yahya Tahir, Abdullah, Sabri Hafiz, Sayyid Hagab, Abdurrahman Al-Abnoudi, and others. The writers of that new wave, including al ghitani were affected by the defeat of the 1967 war, which left its imprint on many things in Arab life, including cultural life, reflecting on its aesthetics, and drawing inspiration from it for a future based on the roots. For me, uh, it is impossible I write by Ahmed. I can because uh, when I started uh, my uh, writing, uh, I was the lead Mahfouz, and I love him very much. Mahfouz, he didn't write the by uh, al But I try to approach the local language in uh, Egypt. I discovered in a local period another language. It is in the middle between official language, Fosha, and the uh, public uh, language, especially in the historical uh, writers, like in the AS, in Makrizi, in Jabati, 
uh, this uh, branch from the language and from the experience of writing uh, not uh, inside the literature experience. According to the writer Muhammad Subhi, al Ghitani's writing benefited from returning to the Arab and Islamic heritage, embedding and reproducing it, and he believes that the distinguished approach he chose was his liberation from the Western novelistic form that other writers before him followed. He credits this liberation with producing the results with a fictional architecture that is inspired by the Arab narrative heritage and in which rich words and ancient structures are common in a way that ultimately leads to the creation of a surprisingly modern work of fiction. His first collection of short stories, The Papers of a Young Man Who Lived a Thousand Years Ago, was described as a first rehearsal in the form of a marquette for all the narrated texts that came after that, especially the novel Azzini Barakat. His book run, winner of the Sheikh Zayed Book Award in 2009, narrates a journey through memory to ancient Egypt, and the book probes into its forgotten myths and heritage, his delusions that he carries about specific places he did not visit and people he did not meet, but he tries to create them through the name, hence the title Ren from the popular word Shanna and Renna, where the Shanna is the name and the reindeer what it is or what it is. That book is the sixth part from his long epic novel which he titled The Notebooks, in which he monitors the conditions of Egypt through the manifestations of storytelling based on cultural, artistic, and civilizational awareness. Among the most prominent novels of Jamal al Ghitani, if not the most prominent, is the novel Al Zaini Baraket, published in 1974, which was recommended as one of the most important prominent novels in Arab novels. He was working as a chief for al bastasin that is chief of informants, during the reign of Sultan al-Ghuri at the beginning of the 10th century after Hijra. The novel depicts the sufferings of the people from the power of the Sultan, the struggle of princes, the monopoly of merchants, and the eyes of al bastasin or the informants. The novel was described as a model of oppression and tyranny that the Egyptians were subjected to in this period. The novel was translated into German and French in 1985 after it achieved a good resonance in the cultural periodicals of the world. The terrible practices of authoritarian regimes and very close to the novel 1984 in which the famous British novelist George Orwell highlighted the features of the authoritarian regime. He also published a novel, Al Zuwail, which is a strange novel about a magical time and revolves about the Al Zuwail tribe that lives between Egypt and Sudan and plans to rule the world. He also published the novel Insights and Destinies, which was described as one of the most fertile literary attempts that he made from the homeland and alienated in the country of oil. The novel was translated into German in 2001, and the thinker Mr. Yassin described it as the most important creative adventure of Jamal al Ritani. Al-Ghitani is considered one of the most famous Arab writers on the internet, as most of his novels and collections of stories are available in digital copies that are easy to exchange, adding a new dimension to this writer who combined deep originality and conscious modernity. He passed away in 2015, leaving behind a great literary heritage. 
One of the streets of Fatimid Cairo was named after him, a street branching from Al Mu'izz al Din al Al Fatimi Street, and a school in his hometown of Suhaig was named after him. His stories and works will speak of him.